good day, baby. <laughs> and then all right, we're good. Do we want to see if Mary Lou and and Candace can turn on their cameras? I don't know if they're in a position where they can. At least on mute. Um, up oh, there's Mary Lou. Can I get a motion to go into? Um, do we have to get a motion to go into a regular meeting? I don't think you need it. All right, then let's just go ahead and start. You got it. <laughs> and then, Mary Lou, you're you're muted, just so you know. Okay, so this is um, our meeting of our capital projects committee, and there is an agenda um, outlining what we're meant to talk on today. So the first is an update on our current capital projects. And uh, we have here first listed streets. So I don't know if there's a pack that we're so there, that we'll go through. There's two different packets. Did you so it and well, there's the side. these things you just right. got. Yeah. So the capital projects are all in the agenda. So or I'm sorry, in the budget. So what we're going to do is just kind of go through um, kind of where things are. So we have <clears throat> um, if, if you want to start Charlie's presentation and then share the screen so that our um, Zoom folks get it as well. Uh, sorry. Knock it down a little bit. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I don't know if the having problems with the copies. There we go. Yeah, so uh, I'll make my presentation on just a status update of cap street capital projects that you've already heard about a few times. Mm -hmm. And then Carlos and Josh are going to make the presentation on the sidewalk capital improvements plan which I think you've heard maybe just a little bit, but we've never presented to you and then that'll be after mine. So next slide, please. So I just wanted to give you an update on Monroe Avenue. I think everybody's aware that, you know, we've had three residents meetings over the last uh, four months. Um, two of them were workshop style where we actually um, in solicited feedback, but also had the residents go around in a workshop style where they met at tables and we had plans on laminated uh, drawings that um, they were able to mark up. So we, we actually received tremendous amount of feedback from the residents. And then we had a final, um, at their request, on-site walkthrough of the preliminary concepts, which I thought went really well in terms of gaining feedback. Um, we've incorporated that into concepts for Monroe and Railroad Avenue, which I'll show you in just a second. But um, just to refresh your memory on Adams Avenue, we're just milling and overlaying a small section of Adams Avenue. We're not making major sidewalk curb and gutter changes to that. So just keep that in mind. So we're actually, we've started over the last couple of weeks, the actual final construction plan design. So, and, but we are planning to have another meeting with the residents once we get to say like a 60 to 70% completion on our final construction plan. So we're hoping that'll be end of July, early August when we can have that meeting just to fill them in. Are you getting enough residents? Is it a nice Yeah, group? I think so. Mm -hmm. Not every single one. The city did a great job of getting it out there to that whole corridor of mm -hmm. homes, both Kings Highway, Monroe, Adams and Railroad. Good. Um, and we had pretty good feedback. I mean, in today's world with the, the uh, virtual stuff, you know, you get it. You know, a lot of people came, but a lot of people were on Zoom. So it went well. We're actually getting um, our geotechnical soil work done now, uh, which will help us with the street designs in terms of, you know, we've got a couple of permeable pores alternatives that we're looking at. And we always do it anyway for utility replacement purposes so that we get a sense of, if any special backfill is going to be necessary, say if clay's down there that we know we don't want to put back in the pipe trench. So like I said, we're going to be meeting with um, the residents late July, early August with our 60 to 70 percent design. And then we'll finalize it based on the, the, that meeting and any comments we get from council. Um, and then we're looking to put it out um, for bid, you know, shortly thereafter it, once we incorporate all that work get it out early fall and then construction would be late fall 
through the through spring of 2023 and it would just be railroad and Adams to start out with at least that's the plan but we're doing the design of all three streets because they're integral to one another in terms of how they transition and, and so forth next slide please but I, I just want to add two of the three meetings we had with residents we also had zoom option available so mm -hmm. so we you know somewhere in obviously the, the on-site meeting can only be held in person i'm sorry yeah. so but the the other two did have zoom we didn't have anybody on zoom at that meeting no, okay not that i'm aware of <laughs> all right next slide uh, so this is um, the latest concept on Monroe um, that we still need to actually, because this is a, a late bloomer. Um, we've got parallel parking on the City Hall side of Monroe Avenue. And to try to incorporate the um, parking spaces at 439 Kings Highway, we've got this um, arrangement. So we're trying to work out our meeting with them. I think they're going to be happy with this because it's basically roughly the same, but the problem that, if you recall, we were having was is how they pull into their park, their driveway and parking area now is that the backs of their vehicles were into the sidewalk. Um, this is the diagonal parking that's shown here. Yeah, that, that area there, Tim. Yeah. 439. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so we've, we've created this similar way of parking at their driveway area but have the sidewalk going around the, the outside of it so we're mm -hmm. going to meet with them to um, just talk it over and hopefully get their um, buy-in on that so that parking is actually in some part of it is in the city right away is that correct it is and then we would need an easement for what goes into their property but i'm assuming that they would work with us on that since we're you know working with them in terms of getting spaces so this is a good one to look at because it's similar to the concepts that on Railroad Avenue that we all that we had many concepts that we went over with the residents and this is what we fell out on where we have two two lane travel way but then parallel parking uh, and parallel parking lane as well. Um, what we showed the residents we showed the parallel parking on the museum side of Monroe Avenue, but um, to, to when we dug into it more with our design and to try to figure out 439, we flip-flopped it and um, we have this new arrangement. It's the same idea, it just flip-flops the, the parallel parking to the other side. Next slide, please. Yeah, so that's a little bit more. That's what we presented. This is different because the parallel parking is on the museum side, but that's sort of what it would look like um, this is some of Carly's work that she did. Um, and that particular option, you'll notice that the parking area is in gray and that's, a, we're going to bid it with a permeable pave, paver option, similar to what we did on Coleman Avenue. And that's kind of what that looks like right now. Um, what kind of, uh, uh, great changes are you going to have to requ be required to establish the parallel parking? Yeah, we, I don't really know every answer to that yet, Tim. Well, that's what the construction detail, the design. I see, that comes yeah, later. We'll, yeah, we always try to keep our transitions to where we keep whatever grades at the back of the sidewalk less right. than three inches from what the it's on private property. Right. Because that's sort of the threshold where we can transition back without a whole lot of heartache to the yeah. residents. You get a little bit more than that, then you're really getting up into their yard and we try to not do that. And again, this uh, parallel parking area that you would be proposing would be all within city right of way? Oh, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent, correct? Mm -hmm. So yep. we're not asking for any kind of easement. No, no, the only easement that we might need is on that diagonal one, which we still need to talk to 439 about. Right, that's the other mm -hmm. yeah. block. In. Yeah, just to get the sidewalk in there. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. So that was Monroe, and this is railroad, what we can't come up with, which is similar. But during the course of the discussion with the residents, um, there were several trees there in the middle of the block that we wanted to protect, everybody wanted to protect. Um, and then over here on that empty parcel, there's a big tree, you can kind of see it, the closest one to the sidewall. We're gonna protect that one too, there was some concern there. Um, so anyway, this worked out pretty good where we were able to bounce the sidewalk back out to protect those existing trees that are um, right there and then bounce it back again and still get a significant number of parallel parking spaces. Um, 
John, are you able to pick up more parking spaces than were there before for this design, or is it just that the it, no, basically the same? Okay. Yeah, but this makes it easy. Make Trans provide some order to it, I think. You know. And are you able to uh, do away with those very awkward transitions with the the curb height, oh, which yeah. is yeah, that's crazy a, there that's in the driveway, like trail side? Yeah. Yeah. That's Mm -hmm. That's all taken care of here. Correct? It will be. It yeah. will be. I mean, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, it's an eight-inch curb now. It'll be six-inch. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the first things when I became an engineer, the city's engineer in 1994 was to change the driveway transition detail yeah, from true. the one that goes like kind yeah. of like mm -hmm. this, which there are still several streets like that, yes. unfortunately, um, to one that just flattens out over more space. And first project we did that on was Mulberry street um, 1994 1995 anyway we do have some issues up um at i think it's 110 adams avenue right at the corner we're working around um some things there with some existing sidewalk and they've got some pretty plantings that we think we can work around as well that's the brand new house there yeah yeah they did a lot of work over the last couple of years that we're trying not to disturb too much of that problem with these street projects is it just, can. you can't promise yeah. them everything. <laughs> yeah. You just never know how those grades work out. So, but I think in that one, we think we, we can work around a lot of it. Next slide, please. So just the rehash on the costs, um, Monroe Avenue, city side, 650,000 total project through construction, including the engineer. That's just for the base asphalt approach. This is a little higher than probably Ellen, Lorraine, and Anne Marie saw in January when we presented. But I'm just it always goes up. I yeah, mean, everything's going up now. We just heard yesterday that how much higher is the high side stuff is yeah. getting worse, not I better, know. which a little bit shocked me because I thought it, I felt like it was. Yeah, maybe I was just hoping getting, that it was getting better. But not supply, worse. Some supply side stuff still still getting some materials is difficult. So I bounced it up a little bit, like ten percent. Um, I didn't move Adams up too much because that is a pretty simple job. So 650 on Monroe, the permeable paver parking area like Coleman, that would be a bit alternate and would likely add to the cost. Um, and then Adams Avenue, 66. Next slide, please. Melody, thank you. Can you, before you go, yeah. oh, wait a minute. It, we're on page six, right? Is that right? Yes. 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 Uh, I noticed that you have, um, and I'm glad that you see that, that I see this a bullet point, the potential BPW water, sewer, storm sewer, and Chesapeake utilities, gas. Oh, Monroe, yeah. Uh, right. Um, I want to really emphasize that we make every effort possible to bring those utilities into a serious discussion about, you know, what they what their needs are, their opportunities that we ha they have now to actually upgrade their utilities in this area before this road yeah. work is done. I mean, it's it's really important that we yeah. well, facilitate in that. In terms of water, sewer, and stormwater, all those discussions have pretty much been had. Um, and what is the BPW's commitment uh, to, to those utilities that they have there? In terms of financial? Well, that and also are they going to be upgrading the, do they have need to change to change or improve the water, the sewer, the, and their oh, storm yeah, water? Yeah, yeah, it's all under discussion. On Monroe Avenue, it's a much bigger project for them because we are replacing the water and the sewer entirely. Right. And then the storm drain will depend on the final grade uh, design, where we put the catch basins, how much new pipe we'll need. That, that's all part of the project and they're on board with that. On Railroad Avenue, they have two um, water mains on there right now. Interestingly enough, one's a 16 inch water main that back in up until like 12 years ago, the well field would pump down to Schley Avenue and that's where all the water got treated with chlorine, fluoride, et cetera. Um, and that was the pipe that came from the well field to the old water treatment plant. But when they moved the water treatment plant out to the well field, those pipes became distribution pipes. So they're part of the distribution system. The problem is that's nice for flows and pressures and hydraulic efficiency across the city, but it's not great. Well, it's not great. It's just that not many houses are tied into them. They right. were tied into old means. So that's the big thing we're doing on Railroad Avenue is tying 
houses from an old, really old, I mean, literally 1920s main that runs down Railroad Avenue into that 16 inch, um, tying their house services into that. So that's not as expensive as like replacing a whole main across the entire. Yeah, one other I know that you, you're a court, uh, consulting engineer for PPW as well as the city. Yeah. So when you do a breakdown or allocation of costs and the two parties, that is the city and the BPW, yeah. are participating in the same project. Yeah. How do we, how do we have confidence that the allocation of expenses is attributed to the right party? It's simple. I mean, we do every bid by line item. So the city has a bunch of line items for streets, sidewalks. Like so, for a street, it's got the base stone. It's got the asphalt, two right. horses of asphalt. Whatever else is associated with the street is broken out by what we call unit price items. Yep. So they bid on the quantity and it goes over here and there's a there's an amount total for that right. particular item. And then the same thing for the board, the water, the sewer, and we stack them in the bid form so that all the cities is in one and all the right. boards. What gets a little tricky is there are certain costs like mobilization, erosion, and sediment control that are Split. Yeah, both. Right. The, the, and it, so, in my experience, I figured out like if it's sixty-seven percent city, thirty-three percent board, or vice versa. So I, I kind of let Amory and Ellen Lorraine know ahead of time what that breakdown is going to be. So then, when every pay application comes in, we create a spreadsheet that has that breakdown by city and board, so that we know exactly what the city's portion is to pay and what the board's portion is. To right. Pay. And I can appreciate what you've just described, yeah. but uh, in the example of uh, if BPW is in fact replacing its service laterals to yeah. the homes, uh, that's going to require uh, cuts into what is the existing road service to mm -hmm. accomplish those new service laterals. Mm -hmm. So uh, for all that, macadam that's disturbed, all the base that's disturbed and so forth. There, that portion is is put in their costs you know, onto them. Is that correct? Or yeah, is all it the like rest, all the trench restorations on them. Now, when they bring it to the top, it's only a, a temporary like asphalt restoration. Right. Until the, because the, the street stuff's always done at the end of the job after all correct. the utility work's done. Right. Yeah. So that's only like a temporary, but they're responsible for the cost of it. And then the city is responsible for, for the, the finished product. Yeah. Right. I understand that. Uh, have you all had any opportunity to speak with uh, Chesapeake and uh, get them <coughs> at least curious about this opportunity? No, we haven't actually, which is a good point in terms of they already serve Monroe Avenue, Correct. but they don't serve railroad. Um, and we, we do want to reach out to them. Well, in, in our regular meetings with Chesapeake, we have let them know this project's under design and encourage them to, to reach out to the the people on railroad. Um, so I, we need to check in and okay. see. Yeah, I'll, I'll make that call. People can also yeah. register themselves to their website and, and they, indicate they're interested. They can. Um, That's not really. They can reach out to Chesapeake, but that initiates kind of a, a larger process. Right. What it doesn't do is address the fact that there's another capital project that they could right yeah and, and you know we, we've tried to encourage them to look at things when we are going to have a road torn up but then what they the other thing that they say is that they typically bore and don't trench so they they don't necessarily see the value in doing it while the road's torn up so i'll call kelly yeah yeah, and on the on the people, I mean, you guys are probably aware of this that oftentimes it just gets stuck because the cost benefit for them is not there, and this might be the case because we're only talking about like 10, 15 homes, but you know it deserves a nudge for sure. Yeah, and we always like to have them do their work after the board's utility sure. work is done. Otherwise, the board's contractor, our contractor, city board contractor on the Monroe Railroad job would have to work around all that new gas main all the time. We ran into that a little bit on Highland Acres when we did that a few years ago. We said, ah, we don't want to run into that anymore. So we always try to get them to do it last after our utility work. Because it, this project does include uh, new sidewalks for the length of railroad, correct? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that 
it seems to me that that would be a, even a more compelling reason for Chesapeake to to at least explore this opportunity. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. Sure, appreciate that. The Tim's point about undergrounding these things, like, is there discussion about the electric too? I mean, are there, these opportunities when you open up the street, I mean, it's a, it's yeah, yeah. So we did have a little bit minimal amount of discussion. So I'll just give you my take on it. On is that it's expensive to run power under to get it off the poles and run it underground, and then the board's electrical department doesn't particularly like it in terms of running that high voltage electric underground and maintaining it. It gets dangerous. That is one piece of the puzzle. The hardest pieces of the puzzle are Verizon and Comcast getting their wires underground because, you know, they're right on those same poles. And just the coordination, time, and cost associated with that can be exorbitant. My, my discussions with Austin, they are not looking to to underground the the electric utilities in this. But that would that would fall back then on council to actually make a policy that when we have these opportunities that we commit to to converting from overhead to underground, well, and then then it would be it could really be the money. board. Well, if they're looking for compensation. If they're looking for, if the board is looking for to be compensated for conversion of overhead to underground, they're looking to someone to make them whole. And that would fall at this point in time, it would fall on the city to do that, I would expect. Oh, so you're you're saying that the city would pay to, to underground the electric utilities? Yeah. Sure. Because in fact, it's a request that we are making of the utility to convert existing uh, overhead facilities that are adequate to serve the communities, and we are opting to convert to underground. It's how you, it's how you, as a, if you create a master plan and a goal, it's how you bit by bit, piece by piece, you actually get that conversion for the entire community or for, you know, each segment as so you I, do these projects. We should probably put that on our next quarterly yeah. meeting with BPW because I'm not, I'm not sure that BPW would be fully on board. Um, because uh, as Charlie said, there are they have some um, maintenance concerns in addition to just the, the cost to underground. So I think that we, we would need to, to bring that up at a meeting where the board. Yeah, and I'll be prepared to discuss any concerns okay. they have about well, that. Uh, because just by the way, this thing that citizens are talking about, just in the sense that there's other benefits to underground Correct. utilities, like sure. the right. effect on the tree canopy. And sure, exactly. Well, yeah, the tree canopy, canopy aesthetic 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 wind, aesthetic. wind storms. Wind storms. There, there yeah. are. Yeah. Like I just, said, it's just yeah. something we yeah. should discuss. And right. to Tim's point, when we're digging up the streets, it's the time to do it. Yeah. Right. So, okay. I, I don't want to. I mean, we never mind. We've done it. We did it on Second Street. Yeah. Um, you know, right. one thing that we do is oftentimes put in the um, conduit for street lights so that it's yeah. already there. So the wire can be pulled and it's already pulled up. If you look at Madison Avenue, it's right. all set to go when the lights, right. whenever right. the lights go on. So we can do that. Okay. All right. Hey, next. Charlie, I have a question for you. It's Mary Lou. Hey, Mary Lou. <laughs> okay. So, um, if I understood you correctly, part of this will be to um, upgrade while we're while we have the streets open to upgrade some of the um, piping um, from Lewis BPW. Um, the question that I have is, especially for those homes that are tied into you know something from 1920, will there there be any additional cost to the homeowner? No, no. The only so what happens there, Mary Lou, is that we will run brand new um, polyethylene Love. service pipe to yeah. the homes to the right yeah. away. Yeah. And then we'll discover what kind of piping, plumbing piping they have leading to their home. Yeah. Oftentimes, if it's been upgraded, it's PVC now, which is good. But yeah. we, it happens to be galvanized pipe or lead pipe. We'll let them know. And, and right now it's on the homeowner to get that replaced once they get notified, but the, the board and the city don't go beyond the right away. Well, and that makes sense, but um, I, I wanna be sensitive to people, especially if some of that pipe, our pipe is from 1920, there's a really good potential that the homeowner may have lead pipe. Yeah. And right. so, you know, I wanna be sensitive to alerting them in advance that, that they don't all of a sudden get a surprise someone knocking on their door and saying hey by the way 
you have a lead pipe, you really should address that. And, and I mean, that's a council decision or an administration decision, how that um, potential might be communicated. But I just want to make that, that everyone aware, yep. nobody wants to get that shock. The yep. other thing is I'll suggest is that uh, with ARPA funds, that is very clear that that is supposed can be, is, are available, those funds are available for that, those lead components in the distribution system. There's also um, a fair amount of funding, I think, and, and this would be the, the non-loan, but grant and the bipartisan infrastructure law. So the, right. the board has put in for, a, I forget exactly how much it is, $130,000 inventory and planning yeah. study through that exact fund, Anne-Marie. And they actually are... We found out last week in at least the committee at the committee level, they're within the threshold of getting approved, but not with grant. It's going to be okay. an SRF loan because of just the median household income right. issues. Mm -hmm. But um, Mary Lou, I, you know, I, I guess it will be a shock when we uncover and they do if if they do have lead that somebody, you know, we GMB always tells them and we keep a record of it all for every single project that we do. Um, so, I, I mean, I don't know, that's like the most solid way of determining whether there's lead or galvanized pipe is to uncover it, which we'll, we will be doing as part of this project. So, uh, I, whenever you tell them that they have lead pipe, it would be a shock. So, that's when we're planning. Yeah, okay, I understand. And But if there is available uh, money from some of the um, right. bills that have been passed, we need to have a plan in place that allows for those homeowners to get that money, um, whether it's rebate or refund or you know application in advance. I mean, obviously we don't want a homeowner um, tying up the project and the project getting completed, but you know, I would say that might be a little bit of work on the administration's part, how to expedite that if there is a need for uh, an independent homeowner. Yeah, so just so you know that the EPA has a new lead and copper rule that'll be um, put into place in 2024, which requires every water utility to inventory and develop a plan for um, replacement of lead water pipe um, serving homes, and not just to the right-of-way line, to right. the point where it leads into the home. So that's part of this study I was just talking about that the went after the funding for, that we would be able to do a full inventory and planning effort to do exactly what you're saying, Mary. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Next slide. That's uh, Monroe Railroad Adams. Anything else on that? I just wanted to give you an update on phase 26. We're in the middle of the design. If you recall, this is 4th Street from Park Avenue to Chestnut. Um, you all right, Melody? Yeah. All right. <laughs> work, work with me here. <laughs> now, um, so we're working on phase 26. Thank you. Um, right now, it's under design. We've added sidewalk work uh, along 4th Street because um, we identified it as in need of some sidewalk work that wasn't originally part of the street project. So this is, um, a, there's a $55,000 estimate for the work associated with that. Um, so this project's gone up along the range to 208, including that sidewalk work. And just, you know, remember that this is part of the five-year plan. This is actually the second cycle of the five-year plan that we developed, uh, decided on last year that will keep the citywide average pavement condition index at 64 and minimize the street that go below pavement condition index of 40, which, as you recall, that's the threshold for potential full rebuild. If it gets much lower than 40, it's, it's a full rebuild. You just can't mill and overlay it. Like what's this one night right now, for example? Uh, so that both of them are a little bit different, but they're both in like the high 40s. Yeah. So you get that little bit worst first or best first. There's a little bit of a balance there. And then comparing that to whatever the city's budget is every, every year too. And did you do a similar outreach to the residents there to... No, we did not because it's just a paving project. 
What about the sidewalk? Yeah, we're we'll, we'll need to talk to those guys because there's going to be some transition work there. But yeah. we, we're just getting cranked up on that, Tim. Okay. Yeah, we just went out there over the last two weeks and identified all the particular areas. So, so you're not looking to pull the trigger on this project during this calendar year, is that correct? Yeah. Fall. Yeah, we'd have it in the fall. You would. Mm -hmm. and, and just and the um, sidewalk work, with the exception of the ADA ramps, um, gets built to the property owners. So there will be outreach to those property owners for that reason as well. May I ask a question about that? Um, the sidewalk is existing along the, that mm -hmm. stretch. I'm talking about from Park to Chestnut, mm -hmm. okay? And it's on each side of the road. Mm -hmm. And that sidewalk is in what I consider some of the, it's in good condition. Uh, now, it is very awkward with all the driveway cuts. It's not easy to walk on for that reason, but that's an engineering pr cause problem. It's not a homeowner-related problem or a sidewalk owner problem. My question is, why, if the surface is adequate, it's not presenting a safety issue, why are we looking to the homeowners to bear the cost of replacing a surface that is completely surfaceable. So I guess two, two things, we're not looking to replace the entirety of the sidewalk. That, that's, that's where GMB went out and looked at areas that need to be replaced. And a lot of those areas that need to be replaced have to do with the driveway aprons where they don't comply with the ADA requirements. Um, and it's, you know, the charter, provides for the sidewalk work and and you know we had this discussion and i guess go back to um monroe and railroad that um that sidewalk work as well under the charter would get billed back to the property owners um you know all of that is the is covered in the charter it's at the discretion of council if you want to pick up some of it but i think that the problematic area becomes if you pick up some and then another project you know we're going to talk about um sidewalk improvements in a few minutes um you know the the fairness issue of letting some people have it without paying for it and then charging people other members of the community but, uh, well we can have that discussion but i do think that typically when we speak of 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 sidewalk replacement at homeowner's expense or repairs, it's due to deterioration of the surface where it has become a safety issue, a tripping hazard, for example. Mm -hmm. and, and don't forget the ADA compliance, which is a huge issue. And the ADA compliance though, yeah, I get that, but that is typically on the backs of the city to remedy, I believe, is no. it not? Not on the sidewalks, at the at the ramps it is. At the ramps, yeah. at the curb, at the corners, that's on the yeah, city, city, correct? Yeah. Okay, so. But not where, I mean, the, the major parts here are where you have driveway aprons that aren't ADA compliant. Oh, I understand and that, that part. That becomes so the whole property. Uh, okay, I get you. Yeah, so the way it works right now is the sidewalk sections and the driveway sidewalk sections are paid for by the homeowners. The ADA ramps and crosswalks are paid for by the city. That's well, I, I, I suggest that we take this up in conversation. And, in and that, because it's again, that's course, certainly yeah, all, all of as council, you have the opportunity to make a policy. Otherwise, of course, it, it's yeah. just I mean, we're looking at we, we've had a lot of um, commentary in recent years about the condition of public sidewalks and it, again, Charlie's going to go over a five-year sidewalk plan in, in a few minutes, and that, that all has a, a cost to it. So if we set the precedent of the city paying for something that I'm has, that. you know, per the charter and as past practice per the charter has been paid for by property owners, if we begin to take that on right. the city, then we're setting a precedent that is going to create, you know, the ramifications. I understand the that. Yeah, always. Yeah, I'm just that. trying to be it's fair. Always been a, right, I'm it's you. always been a strange one for me through the years, too. I mean, I always worry about what the people who 10, 15, 20 years ago have already paid for that right. sidewalk in that same situation 
how they would react. But I mean, that's just right. that's a whole nother piece of the puzzle. Yeah, sure. and it's not really an engineering issue, but I don't think on, on this section, I think in my recollection, there's some drain boxes there that are pretty. I'll call them dodgy. I mean, you can. I think a human could fit down. Some, the Marina Drive. <laughs> Marina Drive. Yeah. yeah. Is there any plan to? Not as part of this part of the project. This is just on the street itself. Okay. But is the BPW a partner on this project at all? No. This is just the city street. We talk to them about other utilities like water and sewer when we go through these streets, but. Um, in terms of like a full stormwater rebuild, no, they're not on board with that. I I do share uh, Andrew, the mayor's concern about um, the drain boxes specifically on Marina. We yeah. we met there, and um, and I think my our council person Khalil Saliba even he and I met there also. He described them as an attractive nuisance. I, I believe that's the correct terminology he is. Well, one of them in particular. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. it's. I agree with you. It's interesting. Dodgy. I like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. why don't you opine? I get dodgy, right? <laughs> I mean, so, Charlie, just, I don't know if this would be the time to bring it up, but one of the things you and I discussed was if this marina becomes a bigger project than the, the mill and overlay, what we might want to do is defer marina and and backfill with another street that would be yeah, roughly in that twenty three thousand dollar range right which we could do that we could do that yeah, that's not a problem and it really wouldn't affect the city's overall street plan because so many of these streets are roughly the same 45 to 50 pavement condition index well, if the issue you, with pilot town though is it's, it's been deferred a lot i mean that's been a lot deferred, of streets deferred. Are a long time coming yeah well, that's Pilot Town Park. I think Pilot Town. I'm just referring to the whole general. Right. Pilot Town Village. Right. That's a whole different thing. Yeah, Ocean View and so forth. Yeah, lots of problems. Then the further we kick it down the road, then you get into the problem Charlie said, which is then you it's more more and more expensive. Right. So so the question is, do you defer Marina and put something else that might be in that general area that doesn't require the the level of engineering review? Right. But I, I, since our stormwater management piece, and we, the city has some responsibility there. Uh, it's a shared responsibility with the BPW. They transport the, the stormwater away from the site, but the infrastructure on the surface is is understood to be managed by us, by okay. the city. The board, uh, the board takes care of the catch basins too. What you're responsible for is the grading part yeah, of to the roof. In correct. The, the curb, the guttering, that yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, right. That, yeah, definitely that. Yeah. Right. And it seems to me that the time to address is holistically at the time that a project is being considered for road work. Road yeah, that's, I mean, I think that's what we're sort of talking about is if you want to defer it, the mayor made a good point that, you know, then that kicks it that if it's a, I don't remember exactly what Marina is, but if it's 45, it's going to keep getting worse and it might end up being a full rebuild type project. Um, I mean, I guess in my mind, it's always about how realistic is it for the city and the board to undertake that huge, it would be just a huge expensive stormwater rebuild of the stormwater system. It would, it would I mean, it just, is that real? I mean, if, if that is real, yeah, then I think it's probably right to defer it. If it's something that's 10, 15 years out, then I think we go ahead with what the plan is now and then address it then. Do we need to make a decision today on that one? Um, I mean, I think it. We need to to know because this is again. Charlie's going to be working on on getting um, the plans ready and the bid documents ready so that we can bid this out later this summer. So this is really the the meeting that we have the opportunity. Yeah. Did you you looked at what other roads might? Yeah, I got them on the okay. sheet. Yeah. Okay. So but kind of what you're saying though is, if we do this, then we probably won't even look at the catch basins until. 10, 15 years down the road when it, I, I mean, I just feel out. like it it's a such an it's going to be such an expensive project that it's going to take some planning effort and right. some funding 
right. development. I mean, again, this could be another one to go on our quarterly mm -hmm. workshop with BPW yeah, to, to yeah. really begin that discussion. But I think if we do that, then Marina doesn't get done in this cycle. Okay, so what we're kind of leapfrogging here, but what would be a substitute so for, the marina. Next slide for, for marina? Melody, sorry. That's I'm sorry to be taking yeah, that. So we're looking at, you know, you could do ride a line from this third is, to Schley. It's $18,000. Just kick it up from year three to year two. Mm -hmm. Probably what I would suggest. Age of 10. Thanks. And then remember, we have the whole street network analysis so we would re-plug in what we're doing and see what gets kicked kicked back out again but that that's what i would suggest don't do marina yeah right. that, that would be like a street mm -hmm. i mean it's a little bit of substituting one yeah yeah we had gotten the the request from people on third street to do an estimate on that have you had an opportunity to do that is that something that would be on, so on like remember between, third street uh, we walked it between market and park yes no okay we that, did we not yet okay sorry about that no it's, 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 it's okay it, 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 you're touching on a question i was going to have which is so in addition to this metric you also are doing some field like well we had, work and looking we had know. gotten complaints from some of the the residents on third street about the the condition so we went and we walked it and did you look at the pci on it i mean i did but i don't remember okay i think it's in that same range around 50 okay if i recall so we we were going to develop estimates for yeah. segments of that we are and we already have those we, and so, yeah, we can. I can get that to you real quick. Okay. Yeah. So that would be consider. helpful. Yeah. I mean, if we're looking to make a decision today, though, how? What's your well, feel? We, we well, could make a decision. You. We could talk know. about it again at June 29th. Right. Well, we're, we're, okay. Let's wait to that. Yeah. yeah. You know, honestly, but it if it's a mill and overlay, the plan does take yeah. that yeah. Yeah. So we can we can kind of jump on the fly. Right. right. So we can add this to our June 29th workshop. Okay. Um. Just so that. You know, we can kind of analyze where we think we're going to be on that. Okay. So this is just, you know, that was phase two, what we looked at with uh, Street and uh, Marina, and then these are the next three years per the plan that was agreed upon last year. So I just wanted to put this in your packet so you can have it. We don't really need to go through every single one of these again. Okay. I've been through okay. Thank you. Thanks. The only one, one I would question yeah, sure. the year five, is that, does that correlate with, with the CAPES construction or is that going to be? Yeah, we're going to have to look at that with the middle school. Oh. oh and, uh, and that actually would actually correlate with their construction because they're they're looking to be open yeah. fall of 2025. Well, are they looking to pay for yeah that, that's what i was just thinking too and maybe we, we could find out. something out of that let's keep it on our list so that when they come back before us we can maybe get them to pay uh -huh. that. yeah uh -huh. yeah yeah that'd be good <clears throat> next yeah, yeah. any other questions on this on these streets okay yeah. that was so, you know, the other project we've been working on is the Smith Avenue, Schley Avenue parking lot. And where we left it with council was we did a lighting analysis of the Smith lot. And it looks like we're going to add a third light. <clears throat> you know that, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Third light. So if you're coming off Savannah Road and here's the parking area, there's one here now. There's one over here. Well, there's a pole over here that we're going to put a light on, and then we're going to add a pole and put another back, light here. Back kind of behind, behind the Daily behind. Market. It was not behind terrible. Well, not behind, not but behind. in that, that corner that, right. that... Yeah, so back... Now, this, these poles that you're speaking of, are these... Uh, are you talking about stringing overhead wire to these service no. lights, or are we doing Off underground the, wiring? Un underground wiring, okay. but they will be utility poles with cobra led lighting on top they're not going to be the expensive lights that we use down on 1812 park i would never expect us to go to that expense yeah. that we have at 1812 but there's something between a cobra light fixture and what we have at 1812 yeah i mean cobra might be a little bit of a archaic way of putting yeah. it but it will be led lighting so well of course I mean, yeah 
And the two almost worked, but the last few spots closest to the marsh in the back mm -hmm. were just dark. Yeah. And so we added that third light. So actually the board's going to, I think the board's going to do all that. It's mm -hmm. not even going to be a part of our project. So right. oh, good. that's a good thing. Yeah. Anyway, we're looking to get that out this summer for fall build for those two parking lots. Okay. Next. Um, anybody interested in the tennis, pickleball, basketball court? Yeah. Nope. Anyway, <laughs> so we, going on? we had our pre-construction meeting <laughs> with uh, ATC Corporation last uh, two weeks ago now, mm -hmm. and they will begin the work. We decided, the city and DMB decided, let's not start this work until after the 4th. Oh, okay. We know that'll be a busy weekend um, with a lot of activity oh, yeah. down there. And just recall that because of the premier surface, it has to be 80 degrees and rising. Right. I remember that. So they're going to start the week after the 4th. I have on there mid-August because I'm gun shy of saying anything else. They said they'd have it done in four weeks time, but mm, okay. I put mid August. Charlie, one of the concerns I have, and thank you for this update on the yeah. tennis course. It's very helpful. Um, what are the requirements of this contractor for what you all call a lay, a lay down area? Yeah. I call staging area. Yes. What What are the plans for that? They don't need that much, but they are going to take up three parking spaces mm -hmm. on the Little League side mm -hmm. um, during that month period of time. And that's all they need. That's that's three, three head in parking spaces. Okay. Yeah, so, so on the little the, the field yeah, side okay. of the tennis courts yeah. in that area. Yeah. Is yeah, we what talked you're... about that at the pre-con meeting and you know threw out a few ideas, but he said I really, you know, the rolls aren't that big and the other equipment I have or materials I have aren't that much. So I just I think I can just take three spaces and then you right. know and that, that contractor knows about what the days of the week he can work and the hours between start time and end time. He knows yeah, that. but he's going to want to work weekends, though. And we said it would be okay because it's off the beaten path, so to speak. It's all going to be inside the tennis court area. So in order to get it done quicker, we went that he'd be allowed to do that. Does so that include, not early in the morning. Does that include Sundays? Mm -hmm, it does, yeah. Well, if it's to get it done fast, I'm sure. That we have Are we okay that. with that? I am just because also it's I am just the trying to get it issue right. Too, so you just got to do it when you can. He, do he's it. Okay, working I, against the weather. I understand that yeah, part. I mean, I, it's a good question, Tim. It's a Sunday, but I, I, in the interest of getting it done as fast as possible, that that that's what we said. Ordinarily, I'd say. And, and given that it's, but, you know, it's not a street where people are going to be traffic controlled into another right, lane or something. Right. It's just all going to be in that tennis court fenced in area. Yeah. Uh, can I just make a ask a simple ask, and this is not of you, this is of our city staff, mm -hmm. and that is, uh, could we make sure that some effort to communicate to the Overfalls people as well as the residents who live in that immediate area and just let them know that there is going to be an activity for seven days a week for approximately a 30 day period? Mm -hmm. And just so you know, that would be very helpful. Not a whole lot of noise of associated with this project. Yeah. We got to yeah. make just... some noise to get the existing tennis court net post up. Uh huh. But there's the rest really is all painting. Yeah, and, and yeah, the laying of the surface. That's right. There's no noise. The right. Fencing. Right. It's not. It's I understand. Not be a, it's not. You know, it's not going to be like you know some of our utility projects. It's right. Not, it's not loud, like loud in town road. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that might be it for me. You'll be happy to listen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So. Um, like I said, Carly and Josh are going to speak to the uh, new sidewalk improvement plan, five-year plan. Mm -hmm. And just so, you know, just a little intro, over the last couple of years, we've walked every lineal foot of sidewalk in the city with our smart level and our cameras and our eyeballs and our experience to determine which one, which sections of sidewalks, ADA ramps, driveway cuts, gutter, uh, are in really bad shape and are in need of replacement. So um, anyway, Carl is going to lead us into it, and then um, <clears throat> go from there. I guess the question for you is: always, Is there a list of like the street? You know, in terms of where people would rank on the the street? You know, similar to a, a list of the spreadsheet that, that is, uh, <laughs> where, where would you sit? I just uh, well, I, I, I just found out the, where the I am. Full, yeah, Harvard. The, the full 
whole database that Harvard we can look up. Or, anything here. Um, like, or we can make available what the PCI is. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Or we can make a list available. Know, so we can query a basic condition index. I know. Yeah, I know. Queenie and two. So hard is that it's kind of like a bell curve. There's so many of them in that 40 to 60 range. Right. You should come to my street. A lot of people. And then it just sort of comes down to the city. Okay. It's just a good first time. And one of the things, just a reminder, one of the things we discussed was once we are finished with um, Railroad Monroe Adams, we'll be able to increase the annual amount because we're not, I mean, the, the railroad Monroe Adams is a very expensive mm -hmm. rebuild. Yeah, we know that yeah, for sure. And just so you know, on the tennis court, basketball court project, I'm not, not only answering to you guys, but now I'm answering to this 20 year old kid at my gym who plays <laughs> basketball there all the time. He wants to know exactly when it starts and exactly when it's going to start. I got a 12 year old that can stick on you too. <laughs> You'd be amazed how smart they are. Oh and yeah. After after Carly goes through the the sidewalk program, I just want to provide a verbal update on on some of the other things that we have in the in the budget for the the current year that are capital projects. So okay. Ah. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Carly LeCompe. I'm the environmental scientist with GMB. And uh, I'm here with Charlie and Josh, um, as we talked about before. And I'm here to discuss our Lewis sidewalk improvements five year plan. Okay. Next slide. So, um, as part of the new city maintained street inventory and planning project, we were further asked to inventory the features uh, like sidewalk features, corner ramps, driveway crossings, and crosswalks for problems areas like cracks and spalling and ADA compliance issues. So the primary focus of this. Can you study, get closer to the mic? Oh, sorry. Thanks. The primary focus of this study um, was to focus on the ADA compliancy, unevenness of sidewalks, and any physical damage to the existing pedestrian infrastructure. Next slide. May I interrupt you there, Carly? Yes. Did you also take into consideration any safety related issues associated with the sidewalks? So I was not the one that we really went out to survey, um, but they did look at unevenness, places of tripping, things like okay. that. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Um, so to collect this data, we sent out a survey team in 2020 and 2022, and they went out and collected, walked um, all the sidewalks and collected points per uh, sidewalk block for cracks falling, ADA compliancy, like I had mentioned before. And from that, then I was able to bring that data into our GIS mapping software to get this um, data spatially so that we could see which sidewalks uh, had the um, highest priority. So all these features were, of course, evaluated by their importance. And so areas that needed to be replaced in entirety entirety, we weighted higher than those that only needed sections sure. to be replaced. Hmm. And then across the board, ADA compliancy was ranked the highest. Um, actually, let me talk about this slide here. It just gives a little bit of an input of how I calculated these. And so each sidewalk was broken up into a section. And so I went section by section counted, say, in this case, the triangles represent cracks and spalling, calculated how many of those were per section, and then multiplied it by our, our weighting system to calculate uh, the weight of that section. When we say section, we're talking about blocks. From yeah. From, yeah. from corner to corner? Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I didn't say segments, but... I'm just going to fall out on block. <laughs> okay. okay. But again, the legend is the triangle on the picture is spalling and cracking. cracking. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Next slide, please. So uh, 
the level of importance here we determined was number one was the sidewalks. Uh, the two was our driveway crossings, three corner ramps, and then four, the crosswalks. And so what we came up with for the sidewalks was that if they were not ADA compliant, um, an entirety would be six points. Mm. The replaced sections would be five. Mm -hmm. For physical condition, an entirety five points replace sections four. Um, for the ramp, again, ADA compliance replace an entirety four points, sections three points, the physical condition and entirety three points, sections two points, crosswalks, ADA compliance. Uh, two points and driveway crossings replacing an entirety was weighted at six points. Next slide, please. And then so from this, we were able to get the weight of each sidewalk block and use the following equation by taking the weight of that sidewalk, dividing it by the length of the sidewalk block, multiplying that by 100 to get our ranking. So the length of the sidewalk block was a really important factor in this to say, say there's 10 problem spots in a 100 foot stretch versus 10 problem spots in a 20 foot stretch, we would wanna focus on the area of higher priority, which would be the 10 in the 20 foot section. Next slide, please. So from that analysis, we got our top 10 ranked sidewalks here. Um, in order from one to 10 is highest priority to lower priority. Uh, the first being 4th Street from St. Paul Street to Mulberry Street. The second being Railroad Avenue from Adams Avenue to Monroe Avenue. The third, Evie Avenue from Savannah Road to Kings Highway. Fourth, Third Street from Chestnut Street to Grease Alley. Third Street from Park Avenue to Mulberry Street. Fourth Street from Park Avenue to St. Paul Street. Seven Market Street from Fourth Street to Orr Street. Eight Fourth Street from Grease Alley to Chestnut. Nine Park Avenue from Johnson Street to Fourth Street. And 10 Market Street from Third Street to Second Street. And then from that, I'll invite Josh up and he's gonna go over the cost estimates. All right, so after we ranked all the sidewalks and you know we ranked all of the sidewalk sections, not just the top 10, so we've got that ranking. And if you guys wanna see that, we can share that with you. I don't have it on hand though. Uh, we went and estimate cost estimated the top 15 or so. Can you get the next slide, please? And like Carly said, based off of the rank of each sidewalk section, the uh, highest ranks are going to get addressed first, uh, just due to the, the most need. And then we base the estimates on uh, recent projects of similar scope, not all within the city of Lewis. Uh, so there's pretty good range of projects. If I used older data, I adjusted it for inflation and bidding climate and whatnot. And then all the estimates you're gonna see include construction costs and engineering fees through construction. And once again, Carly said the uh, field data is from, uh, a lot of it is from 2020. There's a very small amount that got picked up this year. So all these estimates are based off of that 2020 field data. So you can expect some of the sidewalk to get worse. It is sidewalk, so it's not like two years, the whole thing's gonna fall apart, but right. you can expect some additional damage when these projects actually come into play and we uh, go out and then get actual survey to correct all the ADA issues and spot repairs. So after we did the estimates, uh, we created a five-year plan based on a 50 to 100,000 budget, we tried to fit all the projects in that slot. You can get the next slide, please. So three streets come up in the five-year plan, and uh, there's a little bit of method to the madness and some of the ranks. If you could go back to that list of top 10. Yeah, there you go. So you see some of these streets, like 4th Street, St. Paul yeah. Street, to Mulberry. Right. That's mm -hmm. covered in our street project this right. year. We're doing that work there. We're not going to include that in the sidewalk project. Oh, number two, too. Same. We have railroad. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then 
BV is our first one we come to that is not an already in another project. So you go back two slides, up two slides. <laughs> yeah, so you've got BV third and market and go right. to the next slide. So year one, we're calling that 2022, is just the north side of BB. Um, that's an $80,000 estimate. Really, there's a lot of driveways on BB, and I don't think there's a single one that is ADA compliant. Um, some settling issues, but I would say for the majority, the ADA or the uh, driveway crossings are the issue there. The ADA ramps at either end, uh, Phase 23 Street Project addressed the Good Kings theory. Highway in. Right. Del Dot addressed the Savannah. Savannah. Right. Yep. Next slide, please. And so, and that, yep. excuse me, Josh, that is the entire span of BB from Savannah to King, right? On the north, the north side. side. Yes. North side. Right. 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 Okay. Yep. Thank you. We kind of wrestled with that for the next project was the south side, but it was just so expensive to do it all once it didn't fit into that fifty to hundred thousand dollar budget mm -hmm. range. Yeah, just for your information, BB Avenue. I wasn't the engineer, but I was at GMB. It was a, like a 1990, 1991 project. And again, it had those yep. strange detail and driveway. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there any uh, additional right of way available along, on BB, it, you know, width I'm speaking of from house to house on the opposite side? Does that make sense? There, there may be, the Tim. Uh, well, I'd have to look at it, but there may be. Yeah, I think BB's a little wider, so there there may not be. Right, might, sidewalks might be right yeah. up to it. Right. The so reason I'm at houses are right up on the street. Yeah. Yeah, they are. yeah, but I don't know what the right of way is. And yeah. when I when I think of BB Avenue, is uh, again this op is there an opportunity for us to improve the streetscape there by some kind of vegetation, you know, bump outs or something that would allow vegetation to be introduced to the streetscape rather than just the hard surfaces? It's a question. It's a weird Ohio street. City, I remember it was here like right before you came in, we did a... a or I'll sit at yeah. the table. Yeah. You might, you can always sit at the table too yeah. if you want. So I'm sorry, um, just, you know, we did a project probably 10 years ago now where uh, we replaced certain sections of the sidewalk that were really physically deteriorating but then the city, um, and they were deteriorating a lot because of the type of street tree that were there. Mm -hmm. So if you go down there now, there's a whole load of crepe myrtles that were, the city put in less than 10 years ago. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we just re we just repaved the street two years ago. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, and when you do this kind of proposal, the uh, the backside, if you will, of the curb is not that none of that is touched correct it's just sidewalk itself is that correct the scope of this these proposals so for the most part yes but at the ramps curb would be touched um at the no i'm sorry uh, the driveway crossing the driveway yeah right curb, curb would be touched because you're gonna and you're yeah. gonna regrade coming down yeah. to the uh side or to the flat landing area correct. and then with that, you've got to do the curb as well. And so does that require, are you able to accomplish that accommodation with the curb by cutting the existing curb or is it a replacement of that section of the curb? You're, you is can it, cut it, but you know, if you're going to cut it and leave two feet, yeah, you don't want to you take out the whole it's section. Settle. You're just going to take the whole section okay. out. Yep. Uh, but you know, if you're talking about getting rid of one foot 10, 20 foot section. Yeah, just to the one foot. I might just cut it, got a new joint there. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so, year two, 2023, is of course the south side of BB. It's really the same same deal with the north side of BB. It's mostly yep. the driveways, mm -hmm. some uh, damage, as you can see in the pictures that mm -hmm. Harley went out and got for us here. And then, uh, next slide. All right, 2024, uh, there's going to be two slides for this. It's uh, first spot is Third Street from Grease Alley to Chestnut Street. 
that's going to be both sides of the road there. So you're going to take that block and do both sides. Um, this ranked high, mostly because it's a small section of road. But as you can see, there is some pretty significant sidewalk damage there. Right. Yeah. And uh, you know, when you get damage like that, it's also non ADA complying. Right. Mm -hmm. All that settling. And I, I think you get a quarter inch gap that you're allowed in your sidewalk. Yeah. And when you get a crack that big, that's not compliant. Not that's compliant. Pretty messed right. Up. right. Yeah. Next is line. that kind of uh, uh, speaking to your engineering side of your <laughs> your brain, the kind of cracking that we see in these photographs that Carly has uh, provided, is this a result of poor pre site preparation prior to concrete being poured, or is what what causes so this kind of? A lot of the times, it's poor preparation, especially when you get a crack right across the middle of the slab. Right, might not be enough. Uh, the slabs can be too big. When you, that top left picture there mm -hmm. yeah uh, you know that could partially be because of that sign but a lot of times when you get the corner cracks that's freezing and thawing there right. um but okay a lot of times it's poor base what? preparation yeah. yeah all right thank you mm -hmm. next slide so the second part of the uh year three 2024 is third street from mulberry street to park avenue the north side and uh chose the north side here because if you go out look at the south side there's a lot of brick in that it's going to be a slightly more expensive project um <clears throat> hitting that up and tim that top right one there that's a good example of that uh freezing damn that kind of diagonal cut. cracking yeah. yeah um yeah so third street from Mulberry to uh, Park, North Side, that's eighty thousand dollars. And then year four, get the next slide. It's going to be solely the uh, South Side. And as you can see there, you've got that brick. So that ADA ramp right there, that's going to be a bear to redesign with that brick, and you're going to have to go back a good bit and relay a lot of that brick and well let me let's talk about that yeah um is there a is there a requirement that that sidewalk remain brick no requirement that i'm aware of right um, but if it's more costly to do brick then why do why, why, i think that's a decision we, for, for yeah. all of you yeah. right okay, okay. And, and typically why you would keep it Right. As you brought up before, you know, someone paid to put that in like that to begin with. Right. Um, but, yeah. but that is. Mm -hmm. Do you know, Carly, is that at St. Uh, Peter's, this one, the, it's, the it's brick one? It's on the other side of Mulberry from St. Peter's. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Over I'm by just St. trying to get Peter's it in my brain with that. Actually, looks across from St. Peter's on third. Oh, oh, this is third and park. And this is on the south side. Yeah. See, that's what's So I think if we if yeah. we were around oh. St. Peter's, taking out brick would be a much bigger problem. Yeah, yeah but this is yeah, right but way down away from that. And it, yeah, and in the past, the city, is my understanding, did not have any kind of standards with respect to what kind of materials were used for the sidewalk. And the individual homeowner could put brick down, could put whatever, you know, and that might be an example of that kind of choice that a property owner made. I started to say leave it to the, yeah. Property you know, owner. Because if it's on the corner of the third walk, it's owned by, I know, I know who owns it. Right. Okay. The sort of question I was going to get well, to, which is, yeah, you have these broad estimates of the cost. And like, for example, on BB, there were, I think there were six houses on one side of the street and mm -hmm. 10 on the other. So are you sending them like 10 houses each getting a bill for 7,500 mm -hmm. bucks, and then on the other side of the street, they're each getting a bill for 12,000 bucks, and how does this work? Yeah, they get billed for the work in front of their property. They'd have an uh -huh. option since we wanted, if we wanted to take it out. They'd yeah. have an option if they want to pay and keep it in. Well, they don't have an option to keep it in once we replace the sidewalk. Well, but I mean, something. before we do, right. Yeah. Right, but I All think right. it, I, we, I guess the, the question is, do we put it to the property owner exactly. and get an estimate if they want to pay, if, exactly. if they're married to the brick, right. Right, and they exactly. want to pay these. That's an upcharge. Yeah, an upcharge. Exactly. Right. Right. But that doesn't make sense for all of these, right? For example, if someone, 
if people want to pay for a section on BB Avenue of brick and then the other people want to do concrete, that's not going to work, right? I, I think it's but mainly yeah. just so, where there's brick existing. And tell me something, is brick surface uh, compliant with ADA? If it's done right. If it's done uh, correctly. And what kind of maintenance does that require that, that, to well, maintain that's a whole different an ADA-compliant brick well, surface? Go out on 2nd Street, that's, you know, it, it holds up well and actually... It, in my opinion, when you get to the brick and the brick pavers, it can be easier to repair because if That's you true. have one spot settle, you cut that spot out. Right. You do the right. I agree. You put it back. Right. I agree. But that, and so that's partly a reflection of the quality of the mace, the work that the mason does. Yeah. Right. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, looking at this example here, it's old. It, mm -hmm. Right. It stuff's right. It's, it's not papers. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, this is a traditional brick. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is a traditional brick. Yeah. Right. And, and, but yeah, it's old, settles. Everything's going to settle eventually. Correct. Yep. Okay. Again, I'd leave it to what, me. What is the mechanization of letting yeah. these people know, like, you're number one on the list, or your, your sidewalk's going to get and be, be Start make saving. sure you got 15 grand in the bank? Um. So, what, what we'll do is once we have the the segments determined, we will do a letter, um, reach out to the property owners, offer to meet with them. Um, if it is something where, you know, where there's a hardship and the cost could be an issue, it could be billed over time on taxes. Okay. okay. And, and, you know, again, I know like when BPW does that, they charge interest. We don't have to charge interest. Okay. It's really up to you guys. Mm -hmm. We could just say, you know, you could pay it over Five years tax. Right, right, or right, right. And okay. this is 2025. So. Yes. Okay. All right. And then next slide brings us to 2026. Our last year will be Market Street from 4th Street to Orr. There are actually there are some ADA ramps that need to be done on this one, as there were on 3rd Street. Um Driveway crossings again are a big one here. Mm -hmm. And then my recollection is actual sidewalk quality wasn't too bad here. It's more ADA concerns at the ramps and driveway crossings. So that being said, you know, I've got all this information about what's damaged. Uh, if you go to the next slide. Do you see that link down on the bottom? Keep yeah, that. sidewalk rehab. Yeah, so Carly did a lot of work and prepared a, a story map for all of this, and it's good for our planning purposes, but it's also a good tool to uh, see all this information if you scroll down. So all this information, and there was a slide earlier that had triangles and circles. Yeah. Scroll down a little bit. It is found on this story map. That's on page two. He's referring to this one. Thanks. Keep going. Yep. We'll get down yet yeah, to this driveway crossings. Now, if you zoom in there, it's another. No, it's not that one. Yes. You don't have that. No, oh, we no, don't have think, I'm sorry. I didn't yeah, think I'm so. at this one. No, no, right, yeah. <laughs> I'll uh, get the link. Amber, do you have the link to the story map? I do not. I'll get the, I, I'm sure I do somewhere. Yeah, I'll get the link to you. I, I mean, I do. It's yeah. in here. I'll get the link to you, and then Amber, if you can get it out to everyone so at their leisure they can go through I and look at it. this. I have, yeah. I have updated it since. Okay, you, okay. You're actually able to go through and click on individual segments and they'll mm. pop some information up that uh, should be, we went through and changed a lot of it. Um, so it, it should be more user friendly now. A lot of it, there's some extraneous information that wouldn't make a lot of sense if you didn't put all the information in. But you can go through, see what the problem is at each problem spot. And then for the streets that are on the current five-year plan, if that five-year plan is adopted and what we go with, Carly went out late last week for us, actually, and took photos of all the problem spots using GPS. And you'll be able to go look at those five-year plan streets and click each problem spot 
can just pop a photo up and you can see exactly what's wrong with it and where it is. And she's offered a description for each. Uh, that should be with it too, Tim. A ca caption in effect. Yeah, she's, yeah. she's got to pull one up here. Okay, nice. thank you. One question I do have, because I know if it doesn't come up today, it will come up later. That that one section, Charlie, that that's in front of the the Beacon Motel or Beacon Inn, right. that that we get complaints mm, about. Right, it, and and I agree, it's not the worst of the worst. But given the foot traffic in that area, where where did that rate? It's not on there. That's the normal um, spot. I would suggest that it's a relatively small area that we added into one of the agents. Okay, yeah, it's just that one little area on there. Is there any way that we could actually just any time that we have a concrete truck doing work for the city anytime soon, just do it there? I, I mean, that is a I, that has a lot of exposure with a but, lot of. I mean, the, you know, you know the, the challenge is there are other places as well that that are in poor condition. And and unfortunately, it, it kind of like with the roads, you got to take them in, in manageable chunks. I just know that we've gotten. Um, and, and to do anything on Savannah Road is going to require a Del Dot permit. Uh, well, so, but that is a, and that sidewalk would be the expectation is, is that the property owner would bear that expense. Uh -huh. I would su suggest if we haven't already done it, put it in writing, advising that property owner uh, the, their responsibility. So that in fact, if there is a, a loss there, that they are, they've mm -hmm. been properly notified. Who is that? What did you mean? I, I it's lingo, I think. I, yeah, I, I don't think there's actually Beacon. any is any Beacon? actual Beacon liability Beacon. associated with it. I mean, there, there's there's. I mean, lingo owns it, right? Yeah. Um, I I think it's more an issue of, you know, like Charlie said, we could add it to something. Now, again, it, we talked about the number to budget per year, realizing that much of the cost is going to be um, passed along to, to property owners. We came to 50 to 100,000 a year as it's enough um, volume that we'll be able to get bids. Um, and again, we have to put the money out before it comes mm -hmm. in. But there, there is, if there are possibilities or, or if there is interest in, you know, expanding the amount that increasing that amount, knowing that much of it will come back, um, we could do more, of course, over a period of time, right. you know, it's just, and, and you know, the, the, to a point, increasing the amount may get us better bids. True, true. Uh, is this a, where we're in the question section of your yes. presentation? Yep. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Uh, is, is there any uh, expectation that we have that your plans, your engineering plans would address uh, it, pervious material, the use of pervious material versus impervious for the sidewalks? They could. Um, no different course. You're getting into more, you know, if the materials are more expensive, you've got to do testing. Um, those are the two main additional costs. And the you've got to hope that after you've done the testing, the soils are amenable to impervious sidewalk. Hmm. Right. Is, so we would be driving up our engineering costs, is what you're suggesting? Your construction costs as well. And construction yeah. costs too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there is some. There could be some benefit to that. Could be. Yeah. It's all in the numbers. Yeah. Can I ask a couple questions? Yeah. Um, to follow up on what Tim mentioned earlier about safety, I just got two questions. One is regarding, and we're talking sidewalks here. Um, question about Cedar Street and the shoulders there. I know it's a state road. Do we? But do we have responsibility for maintaining that? Maintaining it in what way? The shoulders in particular. Not really. No. 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 There, there, so so Del Dot maintains the entire pavement surface. Okay. So there was a problem with a shoulder, a crack, or where we had someone last summer stumble over a raised piece of uh, asphalt there. It was a, a root 
from a tree mm. and she broke her arm like in three places. It was, it was bad. And um, fortunately Rick came out and we spray painted it mm -hmm. just to mark it so people could hopefully avoid it in the future. So for problems dealing with that, the shoulder, that's a Dell dot question. It, it is. Okay. And I, again, I'm not sure Dell dot, I don't know, gets to that level of, of maintenance so that that becomes, but then if we touch it, that creates problems for yeah, us. That, so now I have been told by Dell dot that if they receive complaints on a specific issue that they tried to address it, so, that was so, more in regards to yeah, storm water, but uh, and they d try to address it by deferring. No, no. <laughs> they, they, said they will make attempts to remedy the situation. I see. Yeah. Okay. So that suggests, Cleo, that if you are aware, of, anybody mm -hmm. is aware of that, let Anne Marie know so mm -hmm. we can have a running list and we can reach out and at least keep trying to nudge Dell Dot's maintenance crew to get get to it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, that would be helpful. Yeah, um, I will definitely show that with Emory. The second question is about crosswalks. Mm -hmm. I know it's lower on the priority list here. It's come up a few times. I don't think it's a you know a, a massive problem, but people have complained about um, in the evenings walking across and cars not being able to see them. Are there? And some of them, I don't. We're, we're, reflectors. Where specifically are you? Down, second, right. Where Savannah meets the second. Uh, right. Third. Third oh, well, street, actually. Yeah. So the, those specific crosswalks are ours. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. we would have signed a maintenance agreement. So those would be our responsibility. There are other crosswalks up and down Savannah Road um, where they've just, the, the piano key crosswalks where mm -hmm. um, the it's just faded and in some cases, mm -hmm. barely visible. Mm -hmm. I have reached out to Del Dot, you know, so apparently they do it when they do a pavement rehab. Um, I, I reached out to Del Dot and said, we've got crosswalks that are barely visible. Can you come back? You know, I, I don't believe um, that those should be the, the city's responsibility. So um, I have put in a request to address those, but any of the side or any of the crosswalks that we have installed, which means any of them that have that are kind of the paver crosswalks the city has done, and we have signed somewhere along the way a maintenance agreement that we would maintain them. Is it so the crosswalks across Savannah, the pave, the paver style mm -hmm. crosswalks, those are the city's responsibilities. That, that is my understanding from a recent discussion with them. With Del Dot about okay, crosswalks. It, it, I would encourage you to look for that MOU and to make sure that we have that. Oh, I'm down sure. To, I'm sure we do. I mean, because I, I'll talk yeah, to you about we, that. Yeah. The second street one, all the ones that we did on Street mm -hmm. years ago, they're all on there. Well, that's the case that if well, they're responsible for them, I've heard ideas about the ability nowadays to put LED lighting up from underneath correct. of those. Well, they have such. that in Virginia. Yeah. Right. And the other idea is a little off topic, but uh, someone suggested to me that lives down there and he's a younger guy that we should consider lowering the speed limit around uh, 15 to 15 miles an hour. In the good. Savannah Road area? That, that's a good, yeah. I don't know um, I, we, we would need to get Dell Dot's endorsement yeah. to be able to do that. Um, because it is a Del Dot road. Yeah. Uh, we can certainly I'm not saying I endorse that. But. Right. Well, I, I would just uh, suggest that regarding the safety issue with all the crosswalks and the top, Andrew just mentioned the light. I was going to talk that reflectors, I think, are kind of passe almost. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I do think that I've heard enough people mention it and I've experienced it myself mm -hmm. in the evening where sometimes you just don't see someone if they're wearing dark clothing or something and i know and again no no one we're going 25 20 but still it, it just seems like if it's a if it's a easy quick fix you know economical fix i think it's something that should be seriously considered so and and while we're talking crosswalks um there is one component of our phase 25 street project that's not done yet and that is the crosswalks at Cedar and Savannah, which were very important because mm -hmm. the amount of people going for ice cream. And now that, you know, there's no ice cream. It, now there's no ice cream. But um, but there will be something there. Um, we're still walking so, it every day. Right. So yeah. that um, project should be done 
We're waiting on the contract. We're just waiting on the yep. contractor it's, to schedule it. So okay. Del Dot pushed the contractor was out there ready to do the work. Del Dot said, No, you can't do the work. For what reason? Um they they wanted a larger section of well, asphalt replaced. One, they wanted a larger section of asphalt, and then one the day of they said, Well, you need a maintenance agreement after they had approved mm -hmm. the plans and yeah. So we had to get all that done and now the contractor, it's paving season is sure somewhere else. Busy. Mm -hmm. And would the Dell not even permit it during the yeah. summer yes. season? Well, we that... can't close a lane, Tim, but yes, they can do the work if they shift traffic and then shift it the other way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Coming that's, across there. Yep. That's, mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. I Khalil, do you have any more questions? Well, I just want to see if, if Candace or um Mary Lou might have a question. We don't we don't see him, so I don't want to be out of sight, out of mind. Did, any questions from anyone online? I no, don't have any no questions from me. Question taking I'm a lot of notes. Oh. Wait, wait, what'd she say? She said no questions, taking a lot of notes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, not the notes. I, I'd like to raise a uh, uh, couple points that I've made based upon my time spent walking around, uh, especially the down, the core what people consider the historic district, commercial district of the city, um, and also other practices that I've seen. Uh, we have, the city has uh, aggressively, and I say this with praise, I'm not being critical, uh, uh, painted curbs bright yellow. And in my lexicon, that indicates that you should not park along that painted uh, curb. In addition to that, we had this practice of putting no parking signs with posts adjacent to those areas that we have painted yellow. And it uh, those posts can encumber sidewalks. So they obst become obstacles and they become possibly a maintenance issue associated to contributing to the wicking of water into the concrete, so forth. So my suggestion to the community, to our staff, so forth, is that if we are committed to the painting the curbs yellow, that we abandon the idea of also having redundant signs indicating that there's no parking. I will also bring to everyone's attention that along Front Street at the 1812 parking lot, I'm going to describe this area. There's a two entrances, or an entrance and an exit to that parking lot. And halfway between the entrance and the exit, there is a very large uh, sign that shows the icon of a pedestrian walking. And that is not at a crosswalk. So it's indicating that anyone can, jay what I consider jaywalking, anywhere in that area. So our signage does not reflect what our intention is. And we have a lot of policing to do to clean this up. And when we have as many tourists visiting us as we do, I think we need to think for them, so to speak, to eliminate these unsafe conditions. So the out on Front Street, that's gonna be a Del Dot <laughs> sign, but the other signs, no parking signs versus yellow paint. Amory, we got into this on the beach parking committee, did we not? Well, we oh. we did, and the difference there is that there's no curbs. there's no curbs. So, and and some of it, some of that relates to there are areas where there have been no parking signs for many years that we had not painted curbs. That due to requests, we have begun painting curbs. So the the signs exist. Predate the, Pre curb, predate the curb painting. And that's fine. I understand that. But I think when we commit now to painting the curb, that becomes the expectation of the community that it's going to be remain in the maintenance program to paint the curb. Then we also should be removing the signs as part of that painting effort. And along 4th Street between Burton and Park is a great example. Or a lot of yellow paint supply, but right. we have and, signs And that's, there. that's all relatively new. I do want to just talk to the chief make sure that there's not an issue with enforcement I, I agree of that course it seems like yeah and it, yeah it's yeah i have an issue with that i'll discuss with you after okay. thank you for yeah. yeah good job josh thank you any thanks. questions Carolyn? no thank you Josh. appreciate yeah. it thanks guys. thank you very much thanks josh do we do we we have uh vehicles and equipment on here are there things that we need to 
So um, I guess a, a, a couple of things. So the, the vehicles and equipment that were in the budget have been ordered. Um, a number of things we're, we're waiting on to come in. Um, I did want to update you that the county grant, um, the $500,000 we submitted for that, that we would use it for police cars mm -hmm. and um, for the, the capital improvements at um, Canal Front Park. We remember we had we, we did four, get that in, right? right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we had four hundred ninety thousand dollars budgeted for um, improvements to the the Canal Front Park Boardwalk. So we we included okay. that, and then we also included um, the upgrades to the Fisher Martin House. So mm -hmm. Allison has has worked on the scope for the Fisher Martin House. Um, we'll be working on on working with Janet on getting the scope together for the the. Um, Canal Front Park, and, and that way we'll get those out, um, hopefully, and get some some bids. That, that's that been another challenge on some of these projects is um, when when contractors are busy, they're less likely to bid on our projects. Excuse me, just so I'm clear, we're, we're talking about the county money that was the one-time transfer yes. surplus. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yep. Yeah, okay. right. So, it's and the 490, five. is that for the two combined projects, Canal Front Park and also the Fisher Martin House? No, 490 no. is what was Canal in the budget for Canal Front Park. Oh, right, and then the Fisher Martin And then Fisher Martin, then Fisher was, Martin House is $120,000. Oh, right. okay. oh, I'm sorry. Um, the 120 is for the air conditioning. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so the that's 120, right. I'm sorry, is, is um, right. air conditioning for the, the police department. Do, so we didn't have a number for Fisher. Oh, and Fisher. Oh, so, okay. Well, I'm reading it wrong. Yes. Right. So it's all for HVAC, um, HVAC stuff related to Fisher Martin House um, or, or for their the AC HVAC units, HVAC at the maintenance department and the police department. Okay. So um, three, HVAC. three. Okay, yes. and, okay, right. And do right. I ha have competitive bids been sought for the HVAC uh, work? We're using state contract. Yeah, but we are required to have competitive bids. Not if we're using state contract. Not according to our charter. Our charter requires that we have competitive bids. The, and and the, uh, the legal opinion has been that if we order off of state contract or a contract that has been competitively bid, that we do not have to do a separate bid process. Because the but state's already bidding Because us? it's already done, yes. Oh, I see. And what that, is, what, okay. Well, and this is a, a advice that Glenn has rendered? Yes, and it's, it's been, I mean, it, it's been long before me that, that we were using state contract, right? For, I believe so. Mm -hmm. But we haven't even selected a, a vendor. We haven't even finalized the the purchase, the material that right. we're getting right, because costs still. Right. We're getting we're getting costs, but we're at this point we're going through the vendors on state contract. Okay. So okay, well, I understand that the state would have a list of preferred contract. No. It's no, no, the not state, the... the state puts things out to bid. Right. And they get contract pricing based on mm -hmm. a competitive bidding process. Right. And those contracts run for a number of years. Mm -hmm. So for instance, HVAC service, mm -hmm. they bid it out because the state has a lot of buildings. So HVAC service, HVAC um, equipment, you know, it pretty much you name vehicles, you name it, the state for the most part, has a, a competitively bid contract that if we are purchasing in accordance with the terms of that contract, it's considered a a purchasing it through a competitive bid because it was competitively bid. I, I don't uh, frankly every, understand Every that, municipality but. uses the state contract. There are also... Um, purchasing, um, what, what do we call them, collaboratives or yes. co-ops mm -hmm. that that do um, bidding, um, that get bid price that, that a number of governments go through. Mm -hmm. um, so we we will often kind of shop between those, those um, purchasing cooperatives and the state contract to see what the better deal is for the city. 
Um, but all of that is considered because it is competitively bid, you don't have to go through the, the whole process. Right. Right. Okay. Well, okay. Well, I need some more reassurances here, please. I need to understand if you're shopping that way and shopping for product and service that way, where is the city in the discussion of identifying what our needs are? So in other words, when you talk to this uh, state approved uh, vendor uh, that, uh, that we have figured out exactly what our needs are rather than uh, calling the vendor well, and asking well, well, him don't. to provide, pardon? Well, I mean, we, that's what, I mean, that's part of, of what it's we do. Right. We, we figure out what we need and then mm -hmm. we look at mm -hmm. the, the contracts that are available. But how do you figure that out is what I'm saying. How does the well, city figure that out? For instance, um, HVAC. HVAC, Allison has gone through all of our HVAC. The, the company that does our service has inspected mm -hmm. all of the HVAC units. They have, you know, made recommendations and Allison has reviewed the, the recommendations and we are looking at the poss there's several ways that we're looking at doing it under the state contract some of it could be purchasing the equipment through the the vendor and then having the installer install it under the state contract or we could go through the contractor nice that's on state contract and they can order it but in that case it's an upcharge so we were looking to go through Ferguson, who is on state contract, but we haven't determined it all yet. Or it's identified. But I mean, we're using the, the competitively big contracts that exist, the technical expertise of the consultants we use, it, it, just like you would do it for your home. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily, you, you would talk to, to several experts to figure out what you need and then Right. Make a determination based on cost and other factors on how to proceed. You you tend to see uh, these people on every ones that you've dealt with in the past, like on. Um, the HVAC, we haven't dealt with them in the past, mm -hmm. but they've been very good. They've been very. I, I mean, you you've met with them as well. They're they're offering different options. I know when we were going through the budget process, we were looking at efficient models of HVAC units. Some other models have come about since the budget has been approved that we are exploring that are even more efficient than what we've been looking at. So we're trying to get all of the pieces together before deciding which way is most efficient and cost efficient for the city. Thank you. Is that it on the buildings and vehicles then? Um, so what you said was that, that's the, yes, that, I mean, we, we ordered the, remember we talked about the equipment for cutting the marsh. Mm -hmm. That's all on order. It should be here next okay. month. Okay. Um, the the um, police vehicles have a very long lead time. So that's going to mm -hmm. take, um, oh, well, is that that's not capital projects, though, is it? No. Okay. Um, there are some some things, and uh, actually, that's not capital either. Um, did I hear you say that we do have the money to for Canal Park Boardwalk? So we we have budgeted four hundred ninety thousand dollars, but we're looking for we're looking to get a portion of that back through the the county grant. Okay, good. That's good. Thank you. Um, the, the other thing, um, I guess, just to update pretty much the, the PD, you'll notice that the office trailer is gone. They are back. Mm -hmm. I, they don't have the, the lockers yet though, right? I think they'll be finished up today. Okay. So, so the, right. the right. police renovations are effectively done at this point. Um, I mentioned Fisher Martin House Allison's working on getting a, a scope out. Um, 
The one thing we haven't talked about that's kind of taken a, a bit of a back seat is the beach parking lot lighting. And we'll need to make the determine if we determination if we want to move forward because there are lights that are not functional. So we either need to replace, you know, repair what's there or we need to to do the the project. If you recall, kind of got caught in the what lighting do we need discussion and dark sky initiative and and is that for both Savannah and Johnny Walker? Yes. Correct. Yeah. So and then the other the other thing I, I did want to mention as a potential future project, um, and and Tim, you've brought this up before, is um, the desire to look at the possibility of crosswalks and handicap ramps along Fourth Street. At, at various locations, um, which we have not initiated a project on that. If it is something that you as a council and a project, capital projects committee want for us to, to move forward with, we, we need, you know, we need that direction. Okay. okay. Is that it for today? Yeah. That's all I have. Okay. Are there any questions I, from actually, the public? I, or I did have one more. Oh, go ahead. The other one that um, the the bid documents are about ready to go out, could go out in the next month or so, but there seems to be question about whether we want to proceed with the wayfinding. Um, I, I've gotten a sense that um, that there. Oh, I, there's something I want to say about that. And so I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit. Um, what we were going to bid out is phase one, which would be parking lots and pedestrian signage. Um, oh, I remember that one. Yeah, ask a question about the wayfinding. That on a workshop. Did, uh, How about we workshop in my that? Have you, uh, has the city reached out to uh, the historic byways and greenways people to ask about what funding sources would be available that they can. I, I make can available. talk to Mary. I'm not aware of of funding sources. Even like even their funding sources are limited. So I, I, I would encourage to you to reach out to Mary and speak to her about that, please. Okay. Put that on a workshop. Maybe yeah, they can so. speak to that. Yeah, to yeah, we can so, do that. So, there, if there are any questions from the participants online, no, thanks, Andrew. Nope. Okay. All right. Then, um, since we're we're done, we we don't need to uh, have a motion to move out. No, you can do a motion to adjourn. Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn then? Yes, absolutely. Motion. Got one and motion. A Got a second. All in favor? Aye. All right, we're out. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mary. Take, Take care, Mary Lou.